Hello and welcome to another episode of Not A Collection Of Parts. You join me as I'm coming towards the end of my uh, trip to the United States and uh, where I've been doing some uh, some dissection and some live streaming. It's been yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm going to be sharing with you some of the footage I've been getting um, uh, in the future. Um, but however far you travel, uh, life is too short for a boring shirt. Men's shirts are really boring. This week we're going to be looking at the subject of inflammation, um, both in terms of injury, uh, repair, um, systemic inflammation. There's a lot of confusion about it, so I want to um, give a little overview of what it's all about, what it's, uh, what's going on with it, and um, you know, hopefully to give you some insights to things we should and shouldn't do. So without any further ado, let's crack on and have a little look um, as we delve into this week's Not a Collection of Parts. Please, um, it would be great if you could support me on, uh, on Patreon, I would appreciate that. Um, it's going to help me to keep this content uh, free to air, and uh, and uh, it just you know it's just going to be some bonus stuff for our my Patreon um, subscribers, and I'm going to be sharing some um, some stuff that you won't be able to see anywhere else on Patreon. So you know, five pound a month, that's all um, it's going to be for a standard membership. So inflammation really for us is kind of the both a problem and a solution in many respects. This is what we have to consider: is that um, inflammation is always going to be there and we need to have it so pretty much anything that you can think about that, that starts with um, the word itis so you know itis is or well, not it is but itis um, and uh, so let's think of a few let's see what we can come up with um, I don't know what the first thing that springs to your mind will be maybe it's something that's personal to you uh, but uh, let's sinusitis so again we've got the itis on the end inflammation of the sinus passages um, the uh, the airways um, arthritis um, now we can have uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, which is more of a, um, a systemic aspect that's more of a sort of an autoimmune system we'll talk about those differences I'll do another episode on that because it is quite interesting um, so osteoarthritis breakdown of that um, uh, the, the, the joints and the capsules and the surfaces of the joints but either way it's still creating this inflammation so this is the imagery that we have you know the, the redness uh, what else have we got diverticulitis is another one and um, again inflammation of the diverticular um, we can I mean, any one of these is a, is, <laughs> is a subject in themselves and it's very interesting hepatitis there you go maybe that's not one that sprung uh, to mind but uh, again inflammation of the liver and so you know hepatitis is, 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 a, is, a, is a quite a big old deal but there's loads more there's you know, what else can we come up with so five four three two one let's quickly flick through how about appendicitis you know if, if you've had your appendix taken out um, then you know that uh, what's what's how, how serious that can be it can lead to peritonitis and you know death if it's not sorted out quickly enough carditis so again we have this inflammation of the heart linings meningitis um, the meninges of the brain otitis otitis media any ideas that's up in the ears and uh, cystitis urinary tract infections uh, more common in women than men that's because the urinary tract is a bit shorter and uh, iritis and in inflammation of the eyes and and there's, there's 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 loads more this is just the sort of the tip of the iceberg so you can get effectively inflammation of any surface or any joint um, and in in between the connective tissue linings there's little spaces um, and uh, the interstitial so you could have probably interstitialitis I, I, I guess I don't see why not um, but the thing about uh, about chronic inflammation and it, the, the, the problem that we have is that you know it does lead to a, a lot of things there are a lot of things that are linked with um, chronic long-term inflammation and so we understand inflammation from the perspective of say, things like arthritis or um, you know where we've got joint problems or joint pain but we also have to think that, that this long-term chronic inflammation is an issue. So for example, if we have uh, somebody with, with um, um, gluten intolerance, so celiac, then the, the problem with the, that is that it's gonna create an inflammatory response and we can ha have that linked to things like um, you know, um, uh, bowel cancers. So metabolic disorders, chronic inflammatory diseases that would be things like rheumatoid arthritis um, and uh, diabetic complications and there's even been uh, links to uh, things like um, Parkinson's and other uh, other issues in relation to uh, uh, you, you know dementia and so on and so forth and we'll come we'll come back to that a little bit later on 
So as before, there are some terms of reference. It's just going to expand the idea rather than just having sort of um, the word inflammation. I wanted to sort of come back and, and, and have some terms of reference so we can, uh, there's more reading that's, that's available for you if you know what's linked with it. And um, so, you know, we can just, just explore that a little bit. And um, the first one we're going to look at um, is we're going to um, look at as our terms of reference stuff we kind of need to know uh, as far as covering this and I have mentioned this before uh, in when we talked about the omentum and what the omentum was doing you know, if you check out that episode is the um, the macrophages and macrophages and phagocytosis or phagocytosis um, the, the problem here's the problem with me I've kind of done a lot of this study and learning <laughs> By myself so I read a word and and it hasn't been taught to me by a lecturer it's been you know stuff that I read and so I get the pronunciation in my head now I don't know whether that's phagocytosis or phagocytosis but there are times when I come out with a word and people go what um, and apoptosis and so apoptosis apoptosis I don't know I don't know what the I don't mix with normal people so i don't know what the 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 the, the, the phraseology is in america i mean you know all bets are off um the, the duodenum is the duodenum so you know go figure but anyway macrophages i know that's the kind of what we're going phagocytosis phagocytosis I don't know, you, you you choose tomato tomato but essentially um this is what we're dealing with is, is, is the is um, the macrophage is a um, a specialist type of blood cell. It's in all our connective tissues. And as I said, I did mention this last week. But here is a here is a cool picture of a the of a macrophage, and its arms are reaching out. And so what it's doing is essentially it's grabbing junk. It's grabbing dead cells, cancer cells, invasive cells, anything that is that shouldn't be there, anything that's sort of hanging around. Um, then you know the macrophages come in and clean it up, and the process. Of, of cleaning it up is called phagocytosis or phagocytosis. Um, and so that's really what it's doing here. I think this is a, um, it's in a, a mouse staining. So it's, it's got two arms there. You can see these arms sort of stretching out um, and it's engulfing those little particles, those tiny little particles. Um, and we don't know what particles they are, you know, possibly pathogens or um, other types of cells that shouldn't be there, but either way it's, it's grabbing it. So it recognizes um, that those th things shouldn't be there. Now, how does it recognize it? Well, that's part of the beauty of your immune system. It will recognize, you know, where things shouldn't be there and it will deal with it. So we've got to think of the, um, of the, uh, the macrophage in, 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 in our body as being a sort of a, a, a building site. And, you know, what it's, it's doing is, is, is breaking down. You've got all these different types of jobs going on, um, different types of you know constructors, and um, and um, we are constantly breaking things down um, and dealing with waste. Even our food, you know, we take take a bit of food in, and then we've got stuff around it that we need, stuff we don't need it, and and so we're constantly breaking stuff down, building stuff up. Um, it's it's a process of 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 of, of repair and um, rebuilding things as far as um, uh, new new cells, new tissues are concerned. So we take proteins, break them down, and then to make more proteins. You know, that's what we're all about. So let's talk about. Um, inflammation from damage the, the the type of inflammation that we are uh, kind of familiar with uh, perhaps and, and more familiar with than, than anything else and so um, we have our, our, our cardinal signs and we get tackled we sprain an ankle or what have you and the, uh, so we get a, a redness um, heat uh, pain uh, swelling and then you know ultimately loss of function we have to limp around um, and so those are what's referred to as the the cardinal signs of inflammation um, but you know this is as I said there's there, there are lots of different types of, of, of uh, potential uh, damage that we can have as far as our swelling is you know for, as far as our inflammation is concerned it's just uh, a case of you know which which is which the thing a lot of people are going to do is they're going to reach for anti-inflammatories and um, this is, is is something now that has been an absolute no-no now the jury has been out for a little while as far as this is concerned and when I when I broke my collarbone um, the, the the surgeon was saying oh you know take take ibuprofen take anti-inflammatories there's lots of anti-inflammatories out there but ibuprofen is is one of them but um, the one that we use I think I think Americans uh, call it Advil same sort of thing diclofenac there's various other um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories out there but here's the thing 
Inflammation, as I said to you, is a, is a really vital, important part of our repair process. And if we don't take it, if we don't engage in it, we don't get into the inflammation, then that repair hasn't uh, completely finished. And so there was a study that came out, not oh, forgot the, <laughs> forgot the, forgot the arrow. Sometimes I put animations in, I forgot the others. So um, that was a little excessive. Um, but <laughs> the study that came out that showed that the short term uh, use of ibuprofen um, may increase chance of chronic pain. It, it, the, the study didn't say ibuprofen, it, sta it said um, uh, anti-inflammatories and most people use um, inflammations. Uh, most, most people use in this country, in the UK, use um, 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 ibuprofen. So, so this is this is where it talks about. This is where it talks about, and you have to sort of wade through this. So, this is the actual um, uh, paper that when you finally get there, and the newspapers are terrible about giving you good link, links to scientific journals. You know, they give you the headlines, but they don't tend to um, give you the the link to the, the journal. So, here's the here's the actual study that's in Science Translational Medicine, um, and um, the headline says here: Acute inflammatory response via neutrophil activation protects against the development of chronic pain. So it's saying to you here that the actual business of, of, uh, of, of what's happening in terms of the activation of the things in the blood, in the blood supply um, are, are stopping you from developing chronic pain. Your natural process is going to stop you from going further down the road of, of, um, of developing chronic pain. So if you don't go through that inflammatory phase, then you end up with the potential for it not to be repaired, and therefore you end up with the uh, potential for, for, for chronic pain. And this is, the, this is the, the statement in here that you have to sort of dig through, so I've done that for you, you you're very welcome. I do apologize for these dodgy you know these dodgy lines here because it you know it doesn't <laughs> this is my 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 highlighting um uh, on my presentation so um in mouse pain assay so 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 this is what they're doing they're, they're kind of torturing mice i guess but they're trying to find out um how these mice respond to pain so early treatment with a steroid or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, uh, um, and non that's what um, NSIAD stands for, also led to prolonged pain despite being analgesic in the short term. Such prolongation was not as though with other analgesics. So, so again, just a sort of translation of this is, is that in the short term, you take it, makes it feel better, makes the pain um, bearable in that short term. Uh, but in the longer term, you end up with the process of inflammation hasn't happened, and this is the, the assumption that comes from the paper, um, and so therefore the chronic pain then kicks in. Um, and um, this uh, prolongation of um, uh, chronic pain was not observed with other analgesics. So, you know, aspirin, paracetamol, alcohol, I don't know, marijuana, whatever, you name it. So this is the thing is that we've got to look at, at, at what the processes um, are. And this is um, from, um, uh, I, I built this myself, but this is a, a study that um, a, a, um, a chap called Professor Tim Watson is brilliant. And he talks about tissue repair. Um, and so the, the stages of tissue repair, repair, which we all understand, um, is that the beginning of that tissue damage is going to be a bleed. And that doesn't necessarily happen, you know, in terms of external bleed, but there's going to be some kind of release of, uh, of the blood if we've torn something. Um, and then we have our inflammation. This is when our inflammation kicks in. But can you see the overlap here? You know, we've got a bleed and almost immediately or very, very quickly, inflammation kicks in in order to start to get rid of that junk. Now, if you ever look around um, a site of a wound, if you look at, you know, where you've scratched yourself, just a tiny scratch, what you'll see is you'll see redness. And if you put a microscope on it or you even, even your phone and you look closely, you'll see around the edge, it's red. Um, and so what happens is the fibers of the blood will stop the bleed, you get the scab. And, um, and then from around the edge there, this redness, this inflammation is the, these macrophages, these little cells are chomping up all the damage because essentially, you know, you've damaged it. If it's bleeding, you've damaged the skin and it's chomping up um, all the damage. And in the process of it chomping up that damage, it's sending signals out to other cells to come in and then dump stuff in to create that process of repair. So it leads us to that statement that is, that you can be reliant on which says inflammation leads to proliferation that means there's proliferation of cells you know something proliferates you get more of it so inflammation leads to proliferation um, and we can see here on this that you know we're talking 
hours, days, weeks. We don't really understand fully yet the, 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 the entire process of, of the inflammatory process and you know what happens and how long it goes on for. But we do understand that the inflammation element is really, really important. And I'm not going to go through the rest of the presentation for you, but it's, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. And then we get um, the process of repair and, and remodeling and so on and so forth. Um, so this is just a, 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 it's a bit of a technical article. It's about the idea of there being um, uh, the key indicators, the, the key aspects. And this is what Tim Watson talks in his presentation. So we get uh, tissue damage, uh, we get the insult, um, you know, the in injury there. Um, and then, I can't seem to get my glasses on here now. Um, so uh, we get the insult, we get the injury to the, the tissue. And then you have all these other factors that kick in. Oh, there we go, got my glasses in there now. Um, oh, the wrong glasses. Um, Anyway, you get the idea. Um, right, <laughs> cytokines, vascular, various hormones, cellular responses, that went well. Um, and, uh, you know, tissue edema, debris clearance, these are all these things that are, that are happening. But um, the, the cytokine promotion are the, uh, cytokines are small proteins, and, and they're crucial to controlling the growth and activity of other cells. So, so all this stuff is signaling um, beyond our understanding or under our, our immediate um, idea of what's going on. They're signaling to other red blood cells, they're taking stuff away, um, and um, they signal the immune system telling you what to do, is there infection, what else is going on. Um, and cytokines are involved in um, the, helping the growth of um, other blood cells. And there's loads of them, particularly in the surface, in that sort of fatty area, that fatty tissue that we refer to as the superficial fascia, there's loads of cytokines in there. So what's the difference between um, irritation and damage? So, so if, you, if, you, if I sort of tapped my hand can, repeatedly, it would be irritating. You know, if I tapped your hand, it'd be more irritating. But I tap my hand, Da, 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 da. and eventually what's going to happen it's going to get a sort of a swelling now if I stop doing it then the the the, 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 the problem stops um, and you know if I had that kind of irritation then you know I could possibly quite happily go on and and take a, an anti-inflammatory and it would you know wouldn't wouldn't bother me at all so a niggle um, will eventually do the same thing uh, as damage. Um, it'll turn into, you know, you keep going. The inflammatory response uh, becomes present. You get that thing going on there. And if you if you just did it with a, you know, while you were doing something um, off and on, it wouldn't be a problem. But if you keep doing it, say, in sport or you keep doing it in work, um, it becomes an injury. And this is the trouble. You keep doing the same thing. You keep getting a niggle. You keep getting a niggle. Um, fruit picker's hand or, you know, whatever you happen to be. Now, and, and eventually rest isn't going to help it, you know, because the moment you go back, it'll, it'll come again. So you take the symptoms away and it comes back again. And that's um, really uh, a problem that we have. So, so therefore, what we need to do is find a way around um, doing the thing that we're doing. And, and this is always the problem that I have when, in terms of sport. Quite often what we're doing is we're, you know, we're, we're getting somebody back to where they were um, and then sending them out and they're doing the same thing that they were doing before and they pick up the, the, inj the injury again. And um, most sports injuries, I think, I can't remember the, the figures, but it's, it's high, it's like high in the, in the high 80s, um, are repeat injuries. And so, you know, your risk of, of, of being re-injured in sport is very, very high once you've already been injured. Um, it's a little bit like um, you, once you've been long-term sick off work, um, the, the, the most vulnerable people for long-term sick are people that have been of long-term sick. And so you get into this cycle of doing it. So we've got to find a way around it. We've got to retrain somebody um, away from the thing that they've been doing to, to do it differently. And it, and it doesn't have to be very different. Uh, um, um, but, you know, just getting somebody repaired necessarily from a niggle, niggle um, is, is going to send them back and they're going to do the same. If it's damaged, you know, you've torn your ACL, um, then fine, repair it. But how do you get there in the first place? And that's really always what interests me. So loads to talk about that, but when I want to move on, I want to talk about uh, systemic inflammation because it's one of those things that um, it, it, it's, it's, again, I've always been a little bit um, skeptical of the idea of, of you know, what, what anti-inflammatories and, you know, how inflammation works. Uh, but um, there is now good evidence to, uh, to tell us that we can change our, um, our, our long-term inflammatory markers by changing the way that we live our lives and the way that we um, eat and drink and so on and so forth. So um, I had a little look at this and I sort of, again, it's a rabbit hole for me and I go into way too much, <laughs> way too much reading. But I sort of 
taken the cream of the top. So there is really good evidence to show, to show and suggest that um, our diet, our, our eating habits, our drinking habits and so on and so forth, are, and even our, just our lifestyle and stress and so are, are contributors. You go back to our uh, earlier slide about how we have this sort of uh, long-term drip, drip, drip of inflammation. Um, and so here's a, a, an interesting study from the, something called the Nutrition Source. It's a, well, it's actually a, a website, so you, the, the link is there. Um, and it's from Harvard, so it's, a, it's reputable. Um, and this is talking about um, when inflammation becomes harmful. So here is what it's saying. I'm not going to um, go into read the whole thing, but um, inflammation is a problem when it's there for a long time. It's like stress. You know, you can cope with stress because you need to in terms of grabbing somebody from a speeding car or what have you. But the drip, drip, drip is very, very harmful because it it challenges the immune system. So. After a while, small amounts of inflammation will, will um, start to damage healthy cells. It creates a pro-inflammatory state. And then you've got the, the genes kicking in and, um, and driving the immune system orders. And so therefore we have um, things like lupus, fibromyalgia, um, and uh, Crohn's disease, and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing about this, and this is again from Harvard, it says unhealthy lifestyle. Sometimes, not everybody, I and mean, some people can get away with, with, with doing all kinds of stuff, um, can uh, trigger chronic low levels of inflammation um, throughout the body. And this is term, termed meta-inflammation. Um, and um, it doesn't show up. You know, you don't see it straight away. Um, but then, slowly but surely, it builds up. And this is where the suggestion is here now. Um, Meta-inflammation can pave the pathway for chronic conditions like cardiovascular disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So again, you know, we think what's going to damage my liver, you know, excess booze, not necessarily this drip, drip, drip of inflammatory um, lifestyle uh, leads to this fatty liver. And Alzheimer's and certain cancers, breast and colon. This is, this is shocking stuff, you know, that, that these little tiny bits of inflammation just over a period of time, through stress, through poor sleep, through lack of exercise, through poor diet, um, are, are, is, you know, is, is something that can, can contribute long term to this stuff that we're seeing here. So therefore, there are certain foods that are um, uh, anti-inflammatory and there are certain th foods that are pro-inflammatory and, and th this is going to shock you this is going to come as a big surprise to you so examples of anti-inflammatory foods <sighs> you listening <laughs> fruits vegetables high fiber whole grains legumes you know vegetables there again um, you know leafy greens avocados olive oil nuts nut butter seeds um, omega-3 fat, wolf, walnuts, sardines, salmon, um, tea, coffee, you know, these are anti-inflammatory, believe it or not, dark chocolate, I love a bit of dark chocolate, um, herbs, spices, turmeric is a really interesting one, there's a whole episode I want to do on turmeric, um, and moderate amounts of alcohol, wine or beer, there's nothing in there that's, that's, that's shocking, right, you know, I mean, for goodness sake, duh, and then our examples of, of, anti, of, of um, uh, inflammatory foods, fizzy drinks, um, loads of things with sugar in them, refined carbohydrates, loads of white bread, pasta, rice, fried foods, um, processed meats, bacon, sausage, hot dogs, um, full fat dairy from cream and butter. There's a, that's, we can come back to that. There's, that that's not necessarily, um, um, there's, there's a bit of non-consensus around that. Um, hydrogenated, oh man, that stuff is a, is a nightmare, hydrogenated fats, fatty cuts of meat and poultry, excess alcohol. Um, and um, other factors aside from diet may help to control inflammation such as exercising regularly, controlling stress and getting enough sleep. So here's where we're at. This is groundbreaking stuff, right? Eat more, <laughs> eat more fruit and vegetables. Don't get too stressed. Take some moderate exercise on a regular basis. Don't do anything to excess. You know, this is the point is that if you look at those lists, none of those are saying don't do this, don't do that. There isn't anything that's saying this is bad. You have to stop doing it. It's just saying, look, overall you know 80 20 in terms of that so i know groundbreaking stuff and and i can sum it uh, i can sum it up by uh, by saying uh, no uh, really i mean is 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 that is that kind of really i mean how obvious is this we we know this stuff what i didn't quite realize was how well accepted the the concept of meta inflammation uh, was into this and and um and then also some of the evidence that's coming out about you know supporting evidence about these diets so here's a good one um this is the uh, dietary inflammatory index 
um, and Human Health, an umbrella review of meta-analysis of observational studies. So the things I do for you to read this stuff and find the paragraph that's interesting, well, yeah, you know, because <laughs> here it is, here's the line um, that uh, is in the abstract there, and it says this, um, um, adherence to a pro-inflammatory diet, those are the, you know, bad stuff that we've seen before, have a significant positive association um, of 71% uh, of the in, in included health outcomes and the p-value is the probability, you know, what's the likelihood of it, of it being a problem or not. Um, and so, um, and then the class two um, was, th there's different classes of the, you know, how, how bad it is. Um, Identify for increased risk of all cause mortality. I mean, that's including getting hit by a bus. <laughs> Overall risk of incidence, cancer and risk of incidence, site-specific cancers, colorectal, pancreatic, respiratory and oral cancers with increasing um, more pro-inflammatory uh, DI score. So basically, um, this, is, this is highly suggestive. So the, the meta-analysis takes a load of studies, studies them and, and sort of says, right, what, when we look at them all and divide them up, you know, what are all the studies saying? What is the, what is the overall evidence saying? And the overall evidence is saying a pro-inflammatory diet, all that stuff that we saw before, you know, loads of beers and hot dogs, um, is going to increase the incidence. Now, you've got to be careful with all these things. And I've talked about incidence and um, prevalence before in, in, in various other things. I'll do another one now about cause and association and what have you. Um, you know, if something increases your risk, it, it's still within the scope of things. So you have an incidence of, say, I don't know, 25 um, in 100,000 people or 25 in 100 uh, people. So that's, you know, one in four. Um, if you increase that by 10%, it sounds a lot, but actually what you're doing is increasing the 25%, not the 100%. So, you know, 50%, um, it goes up by 12 And so you're still looking at the incidence of, you know, generally speaking, uh, within um, 100,000. So um, the um, effects of this, what happens if you go on to um, this, uh, this effect of a, a, an anti-inflammatory diet? So these people designed the diets, generally speaking, a Mediterranean diet. So you can see here what they said, we designed a 13 item anti-inflammatory diet, uh, dietary guide based on the Mediterranean diet without red meat, gluten or cow's milk. Um, I, again, I mean, I, you know, all things, I say all things in moderation, but actually these things in less moderation, you know, much less so. Um, and this is really what they, what they came up with. Again, I apologize for the terrible <laughs> highlighting. Um, but they said we found a correlation between increased anti-inflammatory food intake and improved physical characteristics. In, I'm not quite sure what they meant by that. I had to read that a few times. Improved physical castering, maybe, you know, weight loss, I don't know. Uh, stress and pain in the patients we assessed. Um, and the conclusions here again, um, the, um, the, this diet that they came up with um, includes these. It restricts the consumption of certain pro-inflammatory foods, such as those containing gluten. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's an issue in relation to the, the way that gluten is absorbed. Um, and the, this dietary pattern, um, going back to all those things we said before, improve the symptoms of stress and depression, as well as reducing sleep disturbances. Um, I just want to make the point here, um, and, I, and I had to make this point to somebody recently who, who um, said to me, well, you know, I've, I've got this cancer, um, but um, all things in moderation, right? I can, you know, do... Well, no, because you've got that illness, moderation isn't an option anymore. You've got to go the other way. You've got to be really strict about that for quite some time. Otherwise, you know, you're already in that danger zone. The things that we talk about as far as, you know, cancers or illnesses are the same as the things that we talk about as far as... Um, sports injuries, you know, your increased risk that you go from here to here, not just from here to standardized risk. If there's, you know, 20 in 100,000 and you've already had it, your risk goes up significantly. Um, and, um, and so therefore you have to be much more um, careful and, and notice what it is that you're doing rather than actually just go, well, you know, I can still do what I carried on doing. Well, that's got you there in the first place. Um, and so, you know, I, well, I, I, I'm going to cut back to five cigarettes a day. No, 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 no. You, you, you're going to have no cigarettes a day. That's it. You know, there is no safe level that you can do that. You know, there's no alcohol that you can have for some time in order to get yourself back to that mean level. So this is this is the issue that people that say to you all things in moderation are generally people um, that are not understanding the concept of moderation at all. So um, takeaways from this are... Um, 
Um, inflammation, if you get an injury, if you get pain, if you hurt yourself, uh, by all means take analgesics, take painkillers. Um, we haven't had a tar- chance to talk about ice, but, but, but ice is one of those things that I would stay away from as far as an injury is concerned. Apple cider vinegar, I've got an episode coming up on that. Um, remarkable stuff. Um, but uh, stay away from ice and uh, stay away from anti-inflammatory medication, ibuprofen um, and the other non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Keep mobilized, keep moving unless there's a a break that needs to repair. Um, And then as far as our systemic inflammation is concerned, look at the list, the list is there. We all know that stuff, shop around the outside of the supermarket, all the junk is in the middle. And in America, oh my God, the junk is everywhere. It's hard to avoid it. Um, So uh, it's, 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 you know, everything's so sweet. I, I can't get over the sugar. Um, so yeah, so um, that's that's inflammation. Um, we need it, it's a vital part of our repair. If we don't go through the inflammatory phase, we have a greater potential for chronic pain. Sometimes going back into the inflammatory phase is, is one of those things that, um, that helps. You know, this is what Tim Watson said, that you get somebody who's got a knee problem going on. Um, and uh, you know, we, we, we <laughs> used to load it until it either got better or, or, or broke and we repaired it. So there we go. Um, so thank you very much. Please, uh, I would really appreciate um, anybody supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Julian Baker. Um, there is stuff there for you. I will uh, put extra stuff up for uh, my uh, Patreon support, so subscribers. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. And please um, see me next time on Not A Collection Of Parts. Bye for now.